this is certainly the hardest vlog I've ever had to do and but I want to do it particularly in light of the tweet I sent out last Friday during stand up for cancer That's my mum's favourite ever picture of me. Spot the difference? <laughs> take the glasses off. Yeah, you see, take the beard away. No, maybe not. So today I want to talk about this lady. This is, was, is my Auntie Anne. Auntie Anne was great fun. I used to call her my anorexic aunt. She was always so thin. My mum says that my auntie Anne could eat anything and never put any weight on. She always used to have amazing fingernails, like really long fingernails. Naturally, no false nails. At least I don't think so anyway. Cast your minds back, if you may, to the long hot summer of 1995. I spent most of it here in Fleetwood Leisure Centre and swimming baths. We got what was called a contract, where it basically meant your parents paid a certain amount and you basically were able to get in free every day for the holidays, school holidays. We didn't do a lot of swimming, it was basically cheap childcare for parents really. It was one of those times that when you're going through them, you think this is hell and actually when you look back 20 years later you think wow this was amazing. But at the end of that summer, as I went back to school, things kind of turned different. Because on the 15th of September that year, I arrived home from school and nobody was home and my granddad had died which happens he was 85 been fine in the morning by tea time he's dead it was the first time i'd ever been to a funeral but i remember getting home from school a few weeks after that and my mum answered the, the phone i just remember walking through the door when i got home from school and my mum been in floods of tears and been on the phone to my auntie in america and going oh no and that started quite a, a really rough period uh, in our family's life, really. So Auntie Anne had to fly back from California to Manchester and then on to back home. And we found out a few weeks later she had what was called non-Hodgkin's lymphoma. So Auntie Anne was in and out of hospital for a number of years. I remember going with her, which must have been late 96, yeah, it would have been late 96 when she went into remission uh, to with her in the hospital, get a few checks, and then she was looking to buy a digital piano because I'd done my work experience at a music shop in Blackpool in the summer of 96. And then I remember being woken up at 5 a.m. in the morning by my mum. Auntie Anne lost her battle with cancer in March 1997. The last day I saw her was the 1st of March, and she passed away on the 13th. It's hard talking about this. I can remember my grandfather's funeral, my granddad, mid-September 95. I remember being stood on those steps. I can picture it right now, the hearse coming down and seeing it. I know that we left for Auntie Anne's funeral here in March 97, but I can't remember any of that at all. Maybe there's a difference. I, I, I remember crying at granddad's funeral. I remember accepting it. He was 85, good innings as everybody says. Auntie Anne, I didn't, I didn't cry for years. And everyone deals with things differently, I know that. On this vlog, I, I really don't want to get preachy or anything else like that. But cancer ravages lives and we've solved some pretty amazing, horrible diseases. 
and we have to find a cure and that's why I was so keen to be a supporting stand up for cancer when it was at Central Hall last week that's why I gave my money in memory of Auntie Anne it was only a little bit but if we all do our little bit it can all add up and make a difference la, la, la.